My name is Brandon Gailey, and welcome to episode number 12 of The Blog Millionaire. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use keyword research to get insane amounts of traffic. Specifically, I'm going to go over five long-tailed keyword research tips that every blogger needs to master. My blog received almost 2 million visitors from Google organic search in the last 30 days, and right around 95% of that traffic originated from long-tailed keyword searches. Pro bloggers, like myself, do not sit around and write a blog post on the first topic that comes to their head. They spend countless hours scanning thousands of lines of data searching for long-tailed keyword phrases. Today, I'm going to reveal the five secret long-tailed keyword research techniques that the top 1% of pro bloggers use to achieve high rankings on Google with every single post that they publish. Before I break down how to use each of the five secrets, let's take a deeper look at the long-tailed keyword phrase. In keyword research, there are two types of keyword phrases. The first type is called a head term, like the head on your body. These keyword phrases are made up of one or two words. A few examples of head terms would be cars, life insurance, credit score, and real estate. As you can see in all four examples, they have either one word or two words in the phrase. The second type of keyword phrases are the long tail terms. A long tail phrase is made up of at least three words. A couple of examples of long tail terms would be cheap two door cars, life insurance for senior citizens, how to improve a bad credit score, and luxury real estate in New York City. As you can see, all of these examples have at least three words or more in each of the phrases. The vast majority of the 10,000 most searched words in Google are made up of head terms. However, those 10,000 keyword phrases only make up 18.5% of overall searches. In contrast, over 70% of Google searches are generated using long-tailed keywords. Now, when you're looking at conversion rates of each type of keyword phrase, long-tailed keywords convert significantly higher than head keywords. Search Engine Watch recently published the results of a conductor study, which looked at over 7 million visits to three major retailers. The results showed that long-tailed keywords converted at a rate of two and a half times greater than head terms. The basic logic that's going on here is that as you type in more words associated with a phrase, you're narrowing down exactly what you want. For example, when someone goes to Google and types in the term marketing to do a search, they're just beginning the research phase of looking into marketing. Now, two weeks later, that same person may go to Google and do a search for email marketing services in Houston, Texas. Long tail searches like this show that the person knows what they want, and that's why they typically convert at a higher rate. In addition to higher conversion rates, long tailed keywords are easier to rank for in Google. For the average and even the professional blogger, it is virtually impossible to get a first page Google ranking on a head term. The traffic and the money lives in the long tail. Now let's talk about the best tool that you can use for keyword research. There are plenty of articles out there that talk about creative and free ways to identify keyword phrases to write blog posts on. Every blogger I know uses paid tools for keyword research. Let me make this real clear. If you use a free tool for keyword research, then you are leaving 97% of your potential traffic on the table. It is the equivalent to driving a car with the entire windshield blacked out except for a six inch square right over the steering wheel. There are a handful of good paid keyword research tools on the market. I have tested them all and my favorite is SEM Rush. In regards to keyword research for organic Google rankings, there are three functions of the SEM Rush software that I use on a regular basis. The first function is for keyword phrase research. I type in any phrase and it lists out every keyword variation that contains the phrase with at least 10 monthly searches. 
With a simple click, I can rank the entire list by the words that are searched the most and by the words with the least amount of competition. For the big list that I want to dig into, it offers me the ability to download everything into an Excel spreadsheet. The second function that I use is for competition research by domain name. When I take on a new client blog, I identify the 10 blogs that are the biggest competitors. These blogs are consistently writing posts on topics that my client wants to rank for on Google. This function allows me to see every phrase that each of the 10 blogs ranks for. As long as these blogs have a similar domain authority, then my client's blog will be able to compete for the same keyword phrases. This usually saves me hundreds of hours of keyword research. The third major function that I use on SEM Rush is reviewing the rankings of my client's blogs. With one simple search, I can see every keyword that one of my client's blogs ranks for in Google. This allows me to see trends and the types of keyword phrases that they rank for, which tells me what type of posts that I should keep creating. In addition to these three functions that I just covered, I also use SEM Rush to keep track of my backlinks and for Google AdWords research. If you'd like to test out SEM Rush with a free trial, you can go to theblogmillionaire.com forward slash S E M Rush. And that's M as in Mary. I do have a relationship with SEM Rush. And if you end up converting to a paying customer, I'll get a small percentage of that and it'll support the show. Let's move on to the two key metrics that you need to understand in regards to keyword research. When it comes to keyword research, you can get overwhelmed really fast with all of the different data points. The best approach is to dump every data point except the monthly search volume and the number of Google results for each keyword phrase. Let's go ahead and talk about monthly search volume first. Search volume is essentially the number of searches that occurs through Google for a specific keyword phrase in a one month period. Head terms will typically have thousands, if not tens of thousands of searches on a monthly basis. Long tailed keyword phrases will usually have a range between 10 and 900 monthly searches. The best practice is to ignore long tailed keywords that have less than 50 monthly searches. Even if you rank number one on Google for a phrase with 10 monthly searches, then you will only get three clicks per month from organic Google search. Now, the only exception to this rule is if the phrase is directly related to a product or service that you have. Since I have an online course on blogging, I would still write a blog post on the keyword phrase, start a business blog, even though it has only 20 monthly searches. However, I would not write a post on how to do a social media audit with the same amount of monthly searches because it is not directly related to anything that I am offering. The second metric that you need to understand is the number of Google results, which is also called competition. If you went to Google and performed a search, then you would see exactly how many search results that Google shows for that specific keyword phrase. Through the SEM Rush software that I talked about earlier, you can also see this number for each keyword phrase variation when you perform a search. This number is important because it lets you know how intense the competition is for every keyword phrase that you are considering to write a blog post on. The lower the competition, the easier it is to get a first page ranking on Google. Most amateur bloggers will fly blind in regards to this number. Usually it goes back to them using a free tool that does not show the exact number of results, or they just don't spend enough time learning about the core concepts of keyword research. If you just understand how to leverage the statistics obtained from monthly search volume and the number of Google results, then you will be able to be in the top one percentile of all bloggers. If at any point during this episode, you feel a little overwhelmed with the things that I'm talking about, feel free to go to the show notes post at theblogmillionaire.com forward slash 12. On that post, I break down everything with visual examples so it's a little bit easier to understand. Now that you have a basic understanding of the two core metrics of keyword research, let's go into how to use them to identify which keywords 
your domain name can rank for. There are essentially two techniques to identify keyword phrases that a specific domain can rank for on a consistent basis. If you master these techniques, then every blog post that you create will have around a 60% chance of ranking on the first page of Google. This will lead to a steady increase of organic Google traffic, which will never go away. Let's start with a quick explanation of what domain authority is. Domain authority is a 100 point scoring system that grades a domain's ability to rank well on Google. This is largely based on the inbound link profile of that specific domain name. Basically, this means that your domain authority will be higher if you have quality domains linking to your website. Most established blogs will have a domain authority between 30 and 45. Big news organizations like CNN.com will have a domain authority close to 100. A higher domain authority allows you to target more competitive keyword phrases. You can check your domain authority at opensiteexplorer.org. Here is a basic rundown of which keywords you can effectively rank for based upon a blog's domain authority. If your domain authority is less than 30, that means you should only target keyword phrases with less than 50,000 Google results. If your domain authority is between 30 and 35, then you will be targeting keyword phrases with less than 100,000 Google results. For domain authorities that are 36 to 40, you'll be targeting keyword phrases with less than 250,000 Google results. And finally, for websites that have a domain authority between 41 and 45, you'll be able to target keyword phrases all the way up to 500,000 total Google results. It is important to know exactly what your domain has the ability to rank for. You do not want to waste your time writing incredible 2,000 word posts that no one will ever read because it is a topic that your site will never rank for. I always recommend writing at least 70% of all posts on keyword phrases that fall into your competitive wheelhouse. The other 30% can be on more competitive topics that can be promoted to your email list and used as pillar content. So what we just discussed is called domain authority. Now we're gonna move into topic authority. Google's algorithm assigns topic authority to domain names that have generated quality content on a specific topic that Google users have shown to consistently like. After six months of making daily posts for a new blog, I will be able to identify a couple of topics that I'm ranking extremely high across the board for on Google. For example, with one of my clients, I noticed that several posts on the topic of inventions were all ranking higher than most of the other posts. That let me know that Google had assigned topic authority to this website for content associated with inventions. Once I identified this, I did keyword research to identify every unique variation of the root word invention. From who invented the toilet to Thomas Edison inventions, I created over 200 posts targeting each unique variation. Over 95% of the posts ended up ranking on the first page of Google, and 60% had the coveted top three ranking. When I take over a client's blog, the first thing I look for is any existing topic authority. Be sure to look at your existing rankings to find out if Google has assigned topic authority to your blog. Now let's talk about the two ways to identify long tail keywords for blog posts. With keyword research, there are two processes that pro bloggers use to identify long-tailed keywords that'll be used for a blog post. The first one is called from the chosen topic. Many bloggers will already know a specific topic that they want to write on. This may be something that is hot in the news or is related to one of their core products and services. In this case, the keyword research will be directly associated with the topic. Recently, I knew that I needed to create a podcast episode on AdSense. For each of my podcast episodes, I create a corresponding blog post that will act as the show notes page. In this case, I started my keyword research through SEM Rush by doing a search for the long-tailed variations of any phrase that included the term AdSense. This research allowed me to identify two specific long-tailed keyword phrases that I would use to craft my title. 
both of these keyword phrases had a nice low number of Google results. So I was very confident that my post could rank well for each of the phrases. When you're doing keyword research for a specific topic that you've already chosen, it is still important to look for long-tailed variations that have the lowest amount of competition. The second way pro bloggers perform keyword research is called from the niche category. This process identifies blog post topics by conducting keyword research over an entire niche category. Whereas the previous process would only involve a single search, this process encompasses multiple searches. An example of a niche category to perform keyword research on would be social media. The process would start with a simple brainstorm session where you jot down every root keyword phrase that you can think of that is directly related to social media. Once you're done with your brainstorm session, you will be left with a list of unique keyword phrases similar to this. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube. At this point, you will do a phrase search for each unique keyword via SEMrush. Popular phrases like this will have tens of thousands of variations. The best practice for large terms is to download each list and combine them into one large spreadsheet. Then you can rank the overall list by the lowest number of Google results to the highest number of Google results. This will allow you to browse through the keyword phrases that your domain name has the best chance of ranking for. Now, just a quick reminder, even if you have a high domain authority, you will still want to target phrases with the least amount of Google results first. One other point you will need to remember is to delete any keyword phrases that have zero Google results. This is usually inaccurate data. I know all of this sounds a little complicated, but it really isn't once you've done it a couple of times. It can actually be kind of fun because it is real similar to searching for treasure. There are thousands of phrases for every niche where there is a demand for quality content that has not been met. If you dig deep enough, then you will find these diamonds in the rough. Now that we've covered the core principles of how to find keywords via keyword research, let's talk about how to craft a blog post title from the target keyword phrase that you've chosen. Once you have the keyword phrase or phrases that you want to target, then it is time to turn those basic words into a clever title that will compel people to click on it. Choosing the right words will get your post to show up in Google search and a catchy title will get users to click on that post more than the other results. If this happens and your content is good enough to engage them, then your post is going to rise to the top of Google search results. There are four core essentials that make a clickable title. Although there are many aspects of a great blog post title, these four essentials have the biggest impact on Google ranking. The first one is begin your title with an odd number. Titles that begin with a number are clicked on almost 50% more than those without a number. This is because people love list posts and they can easily scan through the main points. When odd numbered titles were tested against even numbered titles, the odd numbered ones received 20% more clicks. An example of a title before a number would be Keyword research tips for beginners. Once you add the odd number to the beginning of the title, it would be seven keyword research tips for beginners. Not every title needs to have an odd number in front of it. However, I do recommend that 60% of all blog posts use list format and have an accompanying odd number title. The goal is to give people what they want and the statistics all point to more list posts with numbered titles. The second thing that you want to remember with titles is that Google cuts off titles after 57 characters. With this in mind, you want to make sure that your title says what it needs to say before it reaches the 57 character cutoff point. Let's take a quick look at an example that has 70 total characters, so 13 more than the cutoff. The title is 17 long-tailed keyword research tips for beginners that anyone can use. Here's how it will look in Google results when it's cut off. 17 long-tailed keyword research tips for beginners that. So it's cut off right after beginners. 
But because the core concept comes across before it gets cut off, that's okay. Because when people see 17 long-tailed keyword research tips for beginners, they know what the article's about. The takeaway here is that the title that I just mentioned successfully communicates the core focus of the article before it reaches the cutoff point. You should always do a quick character count of long titles so that you know what people will see when it shows up in Google results. The third thing that you want to remember in regards to crafting a title with your keywords is to put your primary targeted keyword phrase within the first six words of the title. Titles that have a keyword phrase in the first six words tend to outrank other titles that do not. The reason for this is mainly related to the 57 character cutoff. The first six words are usually within the character cutoff limit, and that allows the words to be seen by the person performing the Google search. Here is an example title that uses the target keyword of competitive keyword research within the first six words. The title is five competitive keyword research techniques that improve SEO. It has been proven that people tend to click on titles that have the words that they are searching for within them. By front loading the target keyword phrase in the first six words, you can make sure that everyone using Google will see them in your title. The final thing that you want to remember in regards to titles is that you want to use one power word as a superlative to make your title outshine the competition. Words like best, good, greatest, biggest, important, and essential will make your title more clickable than the titles that fail to use a superlative. So when you look at a title before without a superlative, it'll sound like 13 keyword research tactics. And after when you add a superlative, it'll be 13 best keyword research tactics. Best, good, and free are the three most common superlatives that show up in long-tailed search phrases when people use Google. Anytime it makes sense, try and drop one of the big three into your titles. Now, when you look at everything that I just talked about in regards to a clickable title, the clickable title formula looks something like this. Odd number plus superlative plus target keyword phrase. So once again, odd number plus superlative plus target keyword phrase. You are now officially equipped with the long-tailed keyword research tactics of the top 1% of the Pro Blogger Guild. You may be thinking to yourself, this seems like a lot of work. Why can't I just write what I'm passionate about? Being successful at anything takes work and lots of it. You can still write what you are passionate about, but you need to identify the keyword phrases related to the topic that your blog will be able to rank for in Google. I recommend that you go to SEMrush right now and start researching keywords using the techniques you learned here today. Your actions today are gonna lay the groundwork for tomorrow's success. And as I mentioned before, it's a lot easier to grasp some of these techniques that I talked about today by looking at visual examples that I have on the show notes page. So if you wanna take this seriously, take the time to go to the show notes page at theblogmillionaire.com forward slash 12 and review the key tactics again, looking at the visual examples. And then once again, after you see that, go on over to SEM Rush, go to the blogmillionaire.com forward slash SEM Rush to get your free trial and start using these tactics because once you've done it a couple of times, it's like riding a bike. Before you put your phone away and go to your computer to check out the show notes page, be sure to click the subscribe button so that you don't miss any future episodes of The Blog Millionaire. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode, and I'll catch you in the next one.